Hey, I'm Dave Ernsberger, co-president of Commodity Insights at S&P Global, and I'm joined today by Sheikh Nawaf Al Sabah, the deputy chairman and CEO of Kuwait Petroleum Corporation (KPC). Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure, Dave. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in Kuwait and the okay. business, and I'd like to begin a little bit with a conversation around KPC's work in the upstream sector and some of the successes that you've been having developing exploration and production and. In the context of Kuwait's commitments to its OPEC uh, quota being broadly consistent around 2.4 million barrels a day, give or take, uh, what's the thinking behind Kuwait's EMP strategy? And how su what, tell us a bit about the success you're having in, in upstream development against that context. Sure. We start off uh, that context with the realization that we look at the production of oil over multi-decades and not over uh, the next year or two. Uh, we recognize that the call on Kuwaiti crude will increase dramatically with time as fields around the world age, as demand continues to be robust around the world. Uh, the call on Kuwaiti crude will increase because we have the lowest cost barrel in the world and the lowest carbon intensity barrel in the world. So even if, even if our production uh, allocation right now is 2.4 million uh, barrels a day within the OPEC system, um, we have a plan to reach 4 million production uh, capacity by 2035 and hold that. Our current production capacity is around 3 million right, uh, right now. Uh, we are doing that by increasing uh, on a number of levels uh, our exploration. So we're moving offshore and we're producing, uh, we are, we've are we discovered uh, two new fields uh with just two new wells. So right. we're, we're batting a thousand. That sounds very efficient to me. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely, you can't get, get better than that. You can't that. get better than that, that's no. right. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, four more uh, coming uh, in, on the way. A third one has just been drilled and, and is looking uh, quite good so far, but yeah. we'll wait. Um, we're changing the way we work with international oil companies by uh, piloting different projects in, in our Bahra field, for example. Uh, we brought in Halliburton to help us with uh, hydraulic fracturing. We have the longest laterals in Kuwait. That has ta taken production from a field that was basically written off right. uh, to at about uh, 3,000 barrels a day to in 2015 mm. to producing now uh, 65,000 barrels a day with a clear line of sight towards 140 uh, yeah. within the next seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a huge difference for Kuwait. We're... Uh, waiting for bids to come in for a in a more integrated model uh, in Mutraba mm -hmm. uh, field in Kuwait. That's going to give us somewhere about 80,000 barrels of uh, oil production a day, plus 100 million scuff of gas. Right. Ultimately, moving us towards uh, having better cooperations and, and, and greater cooperations with the international oil companies sure. um, within our constitutional framework. Well, I appreciate your point as well about today's production uh, levels and tomorrow's production capabilities are connected but different topics. So there's a need to live in both worlds at the same time successfully, I think. On those um, projects that you're developing offshore, are those using advanced recovery techniques? Can you say a little bit about that? No, the, actually, the, the we're at the expression uh, phase right now. Yeah. So uh, the discoveries actually have been low in CO2, almost no CO2, yep. uh, low in, uh, in H2S, yep. we, uh, straightforward conventional uh, yep. discoveries. So they're not going to be terribly complicated to, to uh, develop, but yep. they've been really large. Yeah. And the yep. first one uh, came in at around 3.2 billion barrels of oil equivalent. Yep. Uh, that is the same as Kuwait's production for an entire three years. Yeah, amazing. And, and from just one uh, discovery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the second one came in um, much smaller comparatively. It's uh, only about a billion. Uh, right. But right. Yeah. And in, in, in a world context, a billion <laughs> is massive. For sure. Well, let's talk a little bit on a connected point there about the efficiency levels of the fields, about KPC's commitment to cleaner fuels. And, yes. you know, KPC hasn't. Um, walked away from commitments to cleaner fuels and it's still a big part of your agenda. So perhaps talk a little bit more, bit more about what KPC is doing in that space. Uh, we recognize that the future demand for oil will move more and more towards low carbon uh, intensity oil. Yep. Uh, I s just said that we're one of the lowest uh, carbon intensity producers in the world, but for us to, ha to hold on to that title, yep. uh, we have to make m much more investments in uh, greater investments in uh, lowering our carbon intensity right. uh, and eliminating it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing that uh, through a number of ways. A lot of it is going to be on CCUS yep. uh, and a, a, uh, a concentration on that. Um, 
interestingly enough, we don't actually have through our uh, operations through our three refineries in Kuwait, for example, enough C CO2 uh, to inject into okay. into uh, utilization. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty practices. remarkable statistic. That is that is a, a and those a are big statistic. refineries as well, right? These are so, big refineries. Yeah, yeah. So total production, uh, total refining capacity of one point four million barrels yeah. Yeah. Uh, a day. So we're actually going to have to find more carbon right. uh, to utilize into right. our utilization. Practice. Maybe some partners that might want to inject their carbon into, the, is that an option for CCS for you? Uh, actually, we're, we're looking uh, to the state, uh, yeah. power plants, for example, yeah. Yeah. Uh, owned by the state. Uh, right. Those should provide uh, the balance of what yeah. we need. Yeah. But it's an interesting uh, position to be in, that where yeah. you want to use carbon and you don't, you're not emitting enough of it. And that's because of the efficiency of our operations right. and, and how we've uh, run our businesses. I was going to say the, the carbon intensity begins, of course, at the wellhead, but it falls all the way through to the, the refining process. Are you making changes there as well to help reduce the carbon intensity? Uh, yes, and we've used, and we're utilizing more and more uh, machine learning and, and, and AI to help us identify yeah. where we can reduce that. Uh, the, the, we've, we've got methane detection everywhere. Um, yeah. We know uh, where things are, but we're still trying to use... Um, uh, new methods and tools to uh, further reduce our emissions. Yeah. How, just if you could give us an example of how machine learning and that data would help the efficiency if it's in place today. Well, some of it is, is actually uh, predictive uh, maintenance. So yeah. we're going after that, that on the refining side. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is, is that and, and then automating our processes even further yep. uh, to, to create greater efficiencies on, efficiencies on the uh, upstream side of, of the business, the, the oil production side. Uh, it goes everywhere from expiration to uh, where it's helping us um, uh, process seismic data much faster yep. uh, to uh, drilling completions where we're targeting reservoirs much uh, more accurately yep. uh, to yep. production optimization yep. where we're uh, utilizing ESPs and, and, and recognizing how ESPs uh, can fail and when they when right, they normally right, would right, fail right. Uh, to HSC that covers all of those yeah. uh, all at the same time, so that it actually is it, it's it's a um, a great addition to how we do business, and we're now partnering with Google and Microsoft uh, coming up as well to uh, to further optimize. Well, that's great. I mean, clearly with um, the very efficient discoveries, not having enough carbon to fill CCS on a standalone basis, some of these things have been very successful, clearly, and a lot, a lot of our attendees can learn from some of your experiences there. Finally, KPC has a long track record of strong partnership in the industry. Um, what, what does a good partner look like to you as you think about developing the business going forward? I don't refer to uh, the companies to which we sell uh, our products as customers as much as partners, and you use the right term here. Mm -hmm. uh, because when our partners grow, we grow with them. Uh, we cater our uh, plans uh, for how our partners okay. uh, will grow. They also build refineries uh, to, uh, catered for uh, Kuwait Export Crude, and that's because we've been a stable, reliable partner for decades. Yeah. Uh, we recognize that this is a partnership where we need each other, over a longer period of time. So neither of us is looking to, lack of a better term, make a quick buck right. uh, off, a, right. off a market and then sacrifice a relationship. Yeah. Uh, where, for, for example, uh, when um, uh, Russian crude for, uh, was, was is selling at, at uh, lower than market share, uh, market prices, and, and uh, some customers have been dropping some of their suppliers to, to go yeah. after uh, that or other types of crudes. Uh, we have not lost market share to mm -hmm. any of uh, yeah. the lower cr priced crudes yeah. because our customers recognize that when they've needed us, we've been with them. When we've needed them, they've been with yeah. us. Yeah. Certainly 1990, when we were invaded, uh, yeah. they were there to help us. Yeah. Um, that this relationship continues over time. And also because there's so many um, uh, customers ready to take Kuwait export crude yeah. that if anybody does want to drop us and then ultimately come back when the, arbit the arbitrage opportunity closes, right. uh, there's already going to be a long line sure. and they'd have to sure. go to the end of the line. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a long term relationship yeah. that, we have, that we enjoy. Well, the energy industry, both traditional and new, is all about long term relationships and it's great to hear your thoughts about it today. Congratulations on all the successes at KPC. Uh, keep up the great work. Uh, and to all of you watching here at Sierra Week, thank you for being with us for this conversation. I uh, hope you enjoy your experiences here in Houston and enjoy the rest of the week.